Assalamu alaikum. Do you suffer with any gut issues? That is the topic, inshallah, that I want to discuss with you today. My name is Zuhair Giraj. I'm the founder of Afia Healing. <clears throat> and in this session today, inshallah, I just want to touch on a few of those emotional aspects that we often overlook when we are trying to deal with our <clears throat> aches and pains, when we are looking to move on with our lives. And there's a lot of times uh, we get a lot of clients that come through wanting to know about their gut issues and anything that doesn't seem to digest well within our bodies ultimately gets stuck in the gut. And <clears throat> it's very interesting how the body continuously sends us messages. And if we don't know what the messages are saying, then we don't know what to actually do with them. And it's the same uh, sort of analogy when a baby is crying and it is so difficult to pinpoint exactly what the baby might need. Is the baby hungry? Is the baby cold? Is what's actually going on with the child? And there's a lot of guesswork that's involved. And then everyone around us will also want to um, share their experience or their 10 cents worth to say, do this, do this, do this, do this. And for the same problem, everyone's got their own uh, solution. OK, something that's worked for them. Now, when we look at the body holistically, the body is extremely, extremely intelligent. And everything that we see on the outside is a reflection of what's happening on the inside. And whatever is happening on the inside is easily reflected within our environment. And in a similar way, <clears throat> when you are in a good mood, everything in your environment seems to be beautiful. It seems to be pleasant that people around you, you're able to just get on with. And you say, Alhamdulillah and Assalamu Alaikum. And there seems to be expansion. Now, similarly, when you are in a bad mood, what happens? Everything seems constricted. There's a heaviness. And you just don't like people around you. You might end up into, in fights or, you know, anything else that goes and happens along there. You'll, you'll start to, you know, um, be very snappy. So just in the same way that your body doesn't respond well to being, you know, in, in that sense, you can see the change in your environment. Now, when people come to us with gut issues, there are multiple issues. SubhanAllah, what can happen? The stomach is where it all sort of begins. And the stomach has acid within it. The stomach acid is there to break food down. That's the first port of entry. Okay, after, it's, after you've eaten, chewed, swallowed, it goes down your gullet into the stomach. Now from here, the actual breakdown of the food begins. A lot of people come and they say we, we're struggling with reflux, acid reflux. Okay, sometimes there's a silent reflux, sometimes there's an acid reflux where you feel these bubbles coming up or there's heat or there's this burning sensation that comes up. So off you go to the doctors. The doctors will tell you, yep, yeah, this is the problem. And you are being, you know, uh, given these antacid tablets just to, um, you've got too much acid, Right. So people become addicted to taking these tablets on a, on a long-term basis, unfortunately. The reality here is, from a holistic point of view, we need to understand what is your body trying to say to you? Okay, when we look at our clients, we're always trying to understand the underlying emotion underneath it. So the body is presenting a symptom. That is not the disease. That is not the issue. There is something deeper than that. And anytime that there's acid reflux, Usually for that person, there is something that they cannot stomach. Does that make sense? Okay, something that you cannot stomach um, is going down. Okay, and with it, ultimately, what tends to happen is, and whenever there is an acid reflux, so to speak, okay, there's, there's bubbles coming up, there's heat coming up, then in that case, there is something that is making you very angry about what you cannot stomach. With silent reflux, one of the um, solutions is sonf, okay? I can't remember the English name of it, but sonf, just chew it and allow the juice to sort of really just go down, okay, into your into your stomach and just chew it for a long time. Just like our grannies used to tell us, you know, take badam and, and chew on it and really for each badam, each, each almond that you chew, you know, keep it in your mouth for five to seven minutes, right? And that takes ages. Why? Because... It, the oil is coming out and, and then it's, it's going and it's taking its, its fennel seeds. Jazakallah. Okay, fennel seeds. <laughs> so take fennel seeds for some 
and um, inshallah that it will start to ease off the the kick of the of the silent reflux now <clears throat> moving on from the stomach the um, food moves into the intestine now a lot of people come to us with uh, ibs right i've got ibs i've got ibd so irritable bowel syndrome or irritable bowel disease um and and various forms of issues now IBS is a is an umbrella term. Underneath it, about forty different issues, um, you know, are are noted down, such as gas, bloating, uh, cramps, uh, diarrhea, constipation. All of these things will be part of this IBS umbrella. Now, when you go to the doctors and you present a symptom, they have a tablet to deal with that particular symptom. So I've got bloating. Okay, try this. I've got gas. Try this. I've got diarrhea. Try this. I've got cramps. Try this. And whatever it is that's happening in your body, your body is trying to give you a message that something is not working inside. Something is not working. So if I am presenting a symptom, but then I'm told to shh, or it is swept under the carpet, or it is ignored, what's going to happen? And if you keep ignoring a symptom for so long, or you silence a symptom, then ultimately it either grows in size or it shows up somewhere else. And this is what is known as a side effect. The side effect ultimately is the body presented an issue first. We did not listen to it. We did not address the core issue. And now it's had to spread somewhere else to make that noise even louder. And so this begins to work its way through the gut. And as it moves through the gut, it moves on towards the liver. And from the liver, it'll move towards the kidneys. From the kidneys, it'll go through the urinary tract out, hopefully, into the bladder. And from the liver also, it'll move back into the small intestine until it meets the colon. Now, the colon itself, subhanAllah, is that part of the gut that is focused on excreting unwanted waste from the body. And what we find, subhanAllah, that people, even today, subhanAllah, within our Afia supervision group, we were discussing uh, the, the, the case studies around ulcerative colitis. So anyone with colitis, colitis, wherever the word itis is used in naming a symptom, that is connected to an inflammation, right? Any itis you have, arthritis, you've got colitis, you've got sinusitis, right? Plenty of itises around there. And what ultimately tends to happen with the itis is that it's an inflamed emotion. When it is colitis, then this is anger that is stored in the colon of something that's happened to you which you cannot let go of. And unfortunately, subhanAllah, we see that people who have an anger issue, so to speak, that certain needs were not met early on in their childhood and or unable to express their emotions, what tends to happen to them? Yeah, they usually end up with ulcers in the stomach, ulcers in the gut, and ulcers in the colon, ulcerative colitis. Anything that's an itis condition generally doesn't get much seeing to. It is simply given a blanket term to say, you've got a chronic condition, you've got an autoimmune condition. Off you go, keep taking tablets and keep the symptoms at bay. But over a period of time, your symptoms will now start to show up other side effects for which you'll need more medications. So come back for that as well. And now that you're taking two medications and then three and then four, and now the first and the third are actually clashing with each other. Subhanallah, this is not what the body wanted. This is not what the solution is or was. What we need to do is deal with what exactly is stuck in me. What exactly do I need to process and release? And if I'm not able to process and release that, my body keeps getting more and more sick. Ulcerative colitis, <clears throat> major issue. From that, ultimately, what we identify and what we see is the phases in our lives that we struggle with stomach-related issues. We see in children, okay, when it's time to go to school, what happens to them? They might start crying and holding their stomach. Oh, uh, what's going on? Why? I don't want to go to school. Why don't you want to go to school? My stomach hurts. Okay, they want to. My stomach hurts. That's why I don't want to go to school. Why does their stomach hurt? Why do children generally come up with this excuse? 
It's not that it always, I mean, they're, they're, they're making things up. No, their stomach genuinely hurts. Why? Because they cannot stomach what is happening in their environment. And this is something for all of us, is that the time that we have an upset stomach, our body is saying to us that I cannot assimilate this information. I cannot assimilate this behavior. I cannot make sense of what is going on around me. When you get bloating, okay, or excessive burping, belching, all of these things, subhanAllah, you start to think, hold on, what is actually going on? What am I holding on to? Why am I filled up with all this hot air? It's got nowhere to go. <coughs> and so we begin to notice these symptoms. If there is constipation, what is it that you're not letting go of? That you do not want to let go of old, mind the pun, old crap, right? And you're holding on to it. But holding on to stuff that doesn't belong in your mind and in your body becomes an issue. So we see that with children, it begins at that age. And for, for young children, you know, who are struggling with stomach cramps and problems, especially with school, please go and speak to their teachers. Identify if there's actually bullying going on or is there something that doesn't sit right with that child of yours. And inshallah, if you do that and you open up the pathways of communication, you will notice that there'll be less and less of these incidents taking place. What we also notice IBS generally kicks in early teens <coughs> and with our teenage uh, daughters and our girls, we need to ensure that this transition from being a girl to becoming a teen, i.e. a woman, okay, through uh, puberty, subhanAllah, there is so much change that happens, so much change, there's hormonal changes, there's mood swings, there's the whole body is shifting. And in most cases, subhanAllah, our daughters are not able to speak about it. <coughs> then they're just simply supposed to just carry on, just carry on with it. Shh, 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 don't, don't let anyone hear, don't say anything. This is not the way that we deal with our, our, our girls. Okay, they have to be introduced into womanhood. They need to be taught these basic aspects. There is no dirt, there is no filth associated with it. It is the body's natural way of cleansing itself and preparing the womb, inshallah, if there is, um, you know, the means that Allah has, has blessed you with of having children later on. But the body needs to adapt into this. And what we also find is that, you know, girls that don't have this easy transition, okay, they're carrying a lot of emotion. And a lot of the times our children become the parents. What do I mean by that? If, for example, may Allah protect us all, that if as adults we are unwell, okay, or there is, you know, certain issues going on in the family, um, <clears throat> sometimes the responsibility of um, looking after, you know, and cooking and getting things done, or even having to get a job at 14, 15, 16 years old, can be extremely pro problematic on an energetic and emotional level for the girl. And as she's becoming a woman, she is not allowed to experience that change in femininity, of embracing her femininity. Rather, she is living in that masculine energy the whole time. And we find later on in life what tends to happen is we see, um, <clears throat> we see uh, conditions like uh, endometriosis and polycystic uh, ovarian syndrome, okay, PCOS and endometriosis and problems with fertility. So again, it comes back down to what are you neglecting along the way? And when women, well, when, when girls become women, that is an extremely important time of addressing their feelings, their emotions, of, <clears throat> of uh, having that closeness with them, for them to feel safe, to feel nurtured, to feel loved, to feel important, to be given that space in which that change can take place. But when we ignore it, when we shut it down, when we tell them to keep quiet, okay, this disruption in the natural flow of our creation ultimately causes this whole blockage in the system. And that is then labeled as the IBS. And if you take it back even more, okay, into childhood, and you see babies, how many of our babies, okay, we've seen suffering with colic? What is colic? It's just 
the stomach, okay, that there is cramping going on in the stomach. And subhanAllah, the emotional reason behind colic is too much noise in the environment. It could just be that the house is extremely busy and noisy, where the child is, is literally like cannot make sense of it. Or in many cases, the child is witnessing the um, screaming and shouting of the parents. And that in itself distresses the child to no end. Okay, and the stomach cramps are the same as a baby, as you see when they want, don't want to go to school, as when they are now entering into their teens. And then subhanAllah, you'll see, you know, in, in many cases later on, where women uh, will get married, okay, and enter into a new environment. They will go into their in-laws field of energy, their home, whatever it may be. And then they can't stomach something. Suddenly now everything is, that's, that, that's not right. This doesn't make sense, but this is so unfair. And all these things happen, boom, you get IBS. But with that, <clears throat> you also end up with thyroid issues. Okay, you might get hyperthyroid initially because your thyroid, your thyroid gland is really trying to pump the energy just to keep you going. But then eventually it burns out. And so you, you fall into um, hypo. Okay, which is also known as Hashimoto's. And at that point, they'll say, well, it's an autoimmune condition. What does that mean? Any autoimmune disease is when your body is fighting itself. Hold on. So why am I fighting me? Why am I hurting myself? That's when you know that emotionally, this is a self-worth issue. That you have basically given up. You've just said, you know what, this, what's the point? This defeatist attitude just allow, gives permission to the body just to say, okay, I've had enough. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything about it. And this is where we have to be so careful, people, is when we are trying to look at the symptoms or work with the aches and pains that we have in our body, we need to address them holistically. Okay? And when we address them holistically, we will understand that this is something that won't just be fixed by a tablet. A tablet might help initially, but on a long-term basis, if you're having to take the same tablet for more than four weeks, okay, and then they give you another tablet, which is a bit stronger for another four weeks, and then they'll give you another tablet to try for another four weeks. After those three months, they will say to you, you've got a chronic condition, meaning I don't know what to do with it. Okay, but uh, nothing's working. So just, you know, try something. It's ajib. So when you go to that stage or anyone that you know has gone to that phase, they don't need that medication. They, what they need is to address the emotional root cause of the problem. And when they start addressing the emotional root cause, you will notice automatically that the symptoms will start to come down. <clears throat> the intensity will come down. Your ability to manage your emotions and your physical discomfort will also start to come down. And with that, <clears throat> what we also see a lot of is when mothers bring their children to say, my child is not well, my child is unwell, my child is crying all the time and my child has got eczema and my child is, you know, um, not suckling or whatever it may be. Guess what? Guess where the problem lies? The problem lies in the emotional detachment of the mother and baby. Okay, this is why when, when, when the baby is born, what's the first thing that is done? Take the baby and place it on the heart. Because the rhythm of the mother's heart allows for the baby's heart also to become entrained and for the prefrontal cortex to start developing. But we never give that chance. Okay, in most cases, subhanAllah, the child is taken away from the mother. There is already an abandonment issue from the time that they are born. And this is why the sunnah, again, when we come back to the basics of, of our fitrah, okay, it is that the baby is connected from the belly button to the mother's belly button. There is a connection there. The baby understood everything that was going on in the environment. We, whilst we were in vitro, we pick up on the environment around us. If the mother is happy, we can feel that. If the mother is angry, we feel that. If the mother is upset, we feel it. If the mother is going through emotions, we feel it. You might not remember it, but you did. 
How? We know because we, we are very careful about the foods that mothers will eat. Oh, don't take too much medication. Don't eat very spicy or chilly hot stuff. Don't do this. Don't do that. Okay, make sure you rest. Why? Because it'll affect the baby. It'll affect the baby. It'll affect the baby. Okay. So, the time that you spend in feeling relaxed and more comfortable and feeling that you are fulfilled and that you are nurtured and that you are safe, the baby will feel it too. When you recite istighfar, when you read salawat, when you do la ilaha illallah, when you're reciting the Quran, then the baby is receiving that energy also. And unfortunately, you know, it is so, so sad that <clears throat> in a lot of relationships during pregnancy, there is a lot of fighting. Okay, and there'll be like toxic in-laws and toxic siblings or, you know, whoever's in your space. But if they provide that negativity, then a lot of our physical conditions that manifest early to mid-life are usually linked back to that time where the mother was suffering, the mother was going through so much changes, the mother was, was trying to be strong and hold the fort, but subhanAllah, the emotions don't lie. And you see these manifesting in children. So when children are brought to us, we address the mother. We ask her, hey, it's not your fault. Okay, nothing to worry about. But how was the pregnancy? What happened during then? And if we can identify certain behaviors or emotions that might be trapped there, we focus on those first. And subhanAllah, whenever we do this, we see that the symptoms in the child begin to reduce automatically as the mother heals. And this is something that we shouldn't take lightly. Why? Because initially, while you were carrying the baby, <clears throat> there was the umbilical cord. But after the baby is born, there are cells of the baby in the mother and cells of the mother in the baby. And so we are linked by Wi-Fi. Okay, this is a spiritual Wi-Fi, mashallah, an emotional Wi-Fi connection. And the signal is strong. And the moment the mother is fine, the moment the mother is feeling strong and grounded, the baby also starts to feel safe. Even children, three years old, four years old, five years old, eight years old, 12 years old, 15 years old, even teens that are running all over the place. Yeah. Once the mother is settled emotionally, your children will settle down also. So <clears throat> it is so important that we understand the energetics behind um, our emotions, our traumas, our symptoms, our diseases, that if we are not able to look at this holistically, then you will continue to suffer and your symptoms will only get worse. Why? Because there's so, only so much capacity that your body has in order to carry all this pain and suffering on your behalf. So guys, if you have any questions, <clears throat> please ask. I'm here for a little while, um, not too long, hopefully. But today's uh, focus really has been the gut. OK, so the gut really is your stomach, your intestines and then moving on into the liver. OK, the liver again, seat of uh, anger. Every, all the anger that, that, that we sort of swallow all the time, it goes it goes into the liver. Right. And then it develops the heat on the liver. And then also the liver is where, you know, um, a lot of fat gets you know deposited with the foods that we eat. So <clears throat> there is some uh, proportion that uh, there's a lot of uh, some proportion of food and the diet and the life choices that we make that contributes towards the manifestation of the symptom. But for the majority, for the most part, subhanAllah, it is the emotions that we grow up on. Yeah, inshallah, all of them are saved and uh, they'll be up there, inshallah, for you to um, come back to. But for now, inshallah, while we're here, if there is any gut related issues, um, then and if you have any questions, then please, inshallah, ask. And don't worry, OK, every issue that I've spoken about that that may seem life threatening and there's no cure for it, there's always a cure. The Prophet ﷺ told us that for every disease Allah created, there is also a cure. And so, alhamdulillah, a holistic lifestyle an understanding that, you know what, I need to do more than just what I'm being told. I need to do my own research. OK, find the, you know, you need to search, search because the cure is there, inshallah. And if you need to, then just message me. 
and we'll be happy to um, inshallah answer <clears throat> okay how do children heal when they are older if the mother has been through emotional issues when they were younger it's fine everyone has their own journey right and whatever issue is stuck in any person any child their behavior will take them through a certain path in life either they'll be hot tempered or they'll be recluse or they'll just be you know like uh, hiding away or they'll be too shy or whatever it may be but somewhere along the line those emotions will be brought back up in the interactions that they have with people and when they do this this is their opportunity to address the issues that have come up for them and this is what we need to be teaching our children this is what we they need to know that when anything happens like this then seek help come and talk to me you know as parents we must all always keep the doors open for our children if we don't keep those doors open they either suppress it or will go and talk to wrong people and when they talk to the wrong people then they get wrong advice and this is the other thing that we shouldn't do is we have a symptom start googling it what does it mean literally everything that it'll tell us is you know what you're you're headed towards death no you're not we ultimately are but there's always a way to make your life better inshallah <clears throat> how would you explain indigestion is not being able to digest what is happening in your environment okay everything is just just doesn't make sense it's not something that your body can deal with and so it leads to indigestion right whether they tell you there's not enough acid in your stomach or you know you've got a slow gut or you got this or you, you know your gut bacteria is very low okay then we know what we can do for that right we can just take um you know these uh live yogurts and uh, kefir and you know stuff like that to to build it up again what do you say this is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way of forcing us to pay attention to the issues we have and look after ourselves better absolutely nothing happens without a, a reason and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy and wisdom allows for these tests trials and tribulations to come our way so that we know ourselves the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbahu the one who knows himself knows his lord so these are all opportunities through our illnesses and ailments we are humbled so that we can submit to our deen submit to our lord submit in the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that inshallah we live a more meaningful and holistic lifestyle if you look at the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's exactly what it is it's a holistic lifestyle yeah um yes so autoimmune conditions like lupus caused by emotional distress absolutely anything autoimmune autoimmune definition is your body is attacking itself the question is why am i hitting me why am i killing myself why has my body turned against itself it's an emotional issue it's it's an issue whereby you um have gone through a particular experience or a particular challenge okay whenever at some point in your life that is causing you to really have a bad opinion about yourself and a lot of the time people will say things like i hate myself i'm absolutely disgusted with myself i'm so ashamed of myself your subconscious is listening to all this you've been lying to yourself the whole life telling yourself you're not good enough you're not worthy of being loved that you've been abandoned and then no one's going to love you and it's all your fault why everything goes wrong you keep saying that to yourself enough and your subconscious mind says okay if that's how you want to live i'll give you some of that back to you and then it makes your life miserable that's when all your symptoms start manifesting upon you okay and this is something subhanallah that we need to get over we really need to understand that 95% of our of the conditions okay listed in on in the dictionary medical dictionary will be emotional why does anxiety cause palpitations and hyperventilations because anxiety is a tool that is a gift that has been given to us in our body to make sure that at times of stress our body is able to shift itself and complete the task in the more primitive sense it's about running away from the lions and the cheetahs and whatever else it was or anyone else that's trying to come and take our land or take our property or whatever we fight with it and so in order to increase blood flow in in order to increase the strength to 
the legs and to the hands and to the arms, we need to have adrenaline, right? And we need cortisol. So these two hormones get pumped in the body. Now, anxiety is good in short bursts. Stress is good in short bursts. We're supposed to be stressed in the day because we're awake and we've got things to do and we've got deadlines to meet. But after that, it's not good to have stress because Allah says, وَنَوْمَكُمْ subata." At night, we gave it to you to rest. But we stress in the day, we stress in the night, we stress in the day, we stress in the night. And there's no rest. The body never switches off. The mind never switches off. If you're always stressed, your mind is so busy with stuff all the time, your body becomes an extension of your mind over time. Does that make sense? Your body becomes an extension of your mind over time. Meaning, it doesn't even have to ask the brain, what are you thinking about? It just says, you know what? All this person has been thinking about is that issue. That person didn't say this to me or that person didn't. That, that person was backbiting about me. That person was, was talking with someone else and I'm assuming that they were talking about me. And because of that, you will allow yourself to be flooded in your body with cortisol and adrenaline. You will always be in stress mode, survival mode. You'll always be in fight, flight and freeze for a month, six months, a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. We've seen that, haven't we? But yet maybe they weren't talking about you. And even if they were talking about you, so what? Are you ready to let it go now? That is the question. Are you ready to let it go now? Are you ready to get better? When you forgive someone, you're not forgiving others because they deserve to be forgiven. You forgive people to release yourself. You forgive others because you deserve that forgiveness. And forgiveness in, the, in this sense is not like, you did wrong to me, but I'm letting you go. No. You did wrong to me. I forgive you, meaning... I leave you to Allah. I leave you to Allah. That, that what you did, I leave you to Allah. And me, I liberate myself from you. I unshackle myself. Because all this time, I gave the keys of my happiness to you. And you were just turning them, turning them, turning them. What's going on? Right? When we forgive, then we are liberated. We gain Allah's mercy, we are elevated, we are given energy and direction. While we are in stress phase, all our energy is outside of us. But in order to heal, we need that energy to come back within us. And this is what an Afya healing is what we teach. And especially in the Deep Trauma Release Masterclass, which is coming up, guys. If you haven't signed up yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. All these conditions you're asking me about, that's the solution. The Deep Trauma Release where am I stuck? What do I need to do? How do I get this issue out of my body? And once we learn how to do that, Alhamdulillah, life becomes that much easier. Does it all go away? I don't know. Sometimes it does. And sometimes you need to do more work. <clears throat> what if someone has struggled with an autoimmune disease since they were really young? Maybe even from when they were babies. How does it tie in with emotional distress for babies or young people? It'll be connected to your mother. Okay, that your mother went through a lot of issues and that you are emotionally connected to your mother. And this is what I say to people is children are like Wi-Fi speakers. Okay, you've got your phone here, but the, but the sound is coming out somewhere else. You're playing the track here. Sound is coming out somewhere else. If you as a mother are hiding and suppressing emotions, saying that, don't worry, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. Guess what's going to happen? The children are manifesting that symptom. So, <coughs> so, what ultimately needs to happen is we can do our own healing, even if it's been there for a long time. Simply need to identify where is it connected to? What are my beliefs around a certain you know, topic or whatever it is? They might feel that they're not good enough or, you know, what's the point living or whatever, whatever issue that, you know, there's a, there's a self-limiting belief. There's always a self-limiting belief that is dragging you down. And that's what we need to overcome. So, inshallah, I hope that sort of makes a little bit of sense. Um, but yeah, again, the deep trauma release allows, uh, you know, the our our participants to 
explore where that main source of the issue is. We need to go back to source. Do, okay, problems with UTI <clears throat> ancestors or fibroids. Okay, UTI is interesting. Uh, urinary tract infections are connected to the kidneys. The kidneys are there to flush out impurities and then pass it out in your water. Kidneys are also connected to territory. When your territory is compromised, whether it be your house or your office space or it's um, your car parking space or even feeling unloved by your spouse, right? Causes anger. First, it's anger. The primitive approach of dealing with territory issues is to we. That's what you see animals do. Animals mark their territory. Yes? And humans, same thing. We're just that we're on top of that whole, you know, food chain. But the underlying trait that we have by fitra is to mark our territory. And when you're angry, and you can't deal with that anger or release it in a, in a healthy way, then that's where the infection is. That's where the burning is. Okay, that, you, that you're literally burning yourself. And what do you take for it? Antibiotics. Did you need antibiotics? No, you needed to speak about it. You needed to vocalize it. But when you can't vocalize these things, that's where it becomes an issue. Um, cysts are anything where cysts and ulcers are pockets of emotion that are held in the body. Fibroids is usually connected to the hurt that you are nursing from a partner. Okay, so something that happened and you're holding on to that hurt and because of your spouse, or it could have been, you know, someone else, a sibling, whatever. But that can also lead to fibroids. <clears throat> Do you know how ADHD connected to gut issues? There was a health podcast on it. I wonder if you have a different perspective. ADHD <clears throat> is, as the name suggests, attention deficient. Okay. Or, yeah, attention deficient. And, and that's all it is, is lack of attention. The child needs attention. And we see this with, you know, when, when, when children throw tantrums, what are they seeking? They are seeking attention. They are seeking attention. And if you're not giving them attention, then that behavior becomes programmed. Right? And again, with it, there'll always be gut issues. Again, as I said earlier when I started, that all our gut issues is to do with the environment. And what we can't stomach ultimately is locked into our gut. And that then determines our behavior about everything else that's going on around. Guys, if you're not following yet, please do, inshallah. And if you haven't watched all the other videos, like a thousand of them, then inshallah, please go on and have a look at that as well. <clears throat> Can you please explain reason for polyps? Similar thing, okay? Pockets of... Anything that grows out of where it needs to is usually connected to poor boundaries. That's the first thing. Okay. And even um, hernias, for example, will be due to, uh, due to poor boundaries. But then also at the same time, the polyps will be pockets of information that are uh, stuck in the system. How to get rid of urgency to pass urine frequently? <clears throat> that would need a bladder reset, I think. Um, and just stretches, okay? So be, being able to just hold under your belly button over the bladder, pulling up, okay? Literally pull up really, you know, pull up on the skin hard and stretch your back all the way back and take deep breaths, six deep breaths. <sighs> and blow them out like that. And do that, inshallah, a couple of times a day and you'll notice, inshallah, that that frequency also stops. Um, and also make sure you're drinking enough. Make sure also that you're not pre-diabetic, right? So there's a lot of different things there, but generally a bladder reset, inshallah, would, would help over here. <clears throat> Ulcerative colitis, we spoke at the start, it's um, holding on to anger. The itis conditions are inflamed emotions. It's anger that is stuck in the colon, right? And it's stuff, it's, it's literally crap, right? That's what it is. That's why it's in the colon, because the colon is, is your exit point. And so... If everything is held on, the anger, and, and, and you're unable to release it, that's where it becomes inflamed. That inflammation then takes over the colon. And similar to Crohn's disease as well, unfortunately, is that it literally eats away the colon. So may Allah save us from that as well. <clears throat> back pain, of course it's emotional. Everything is emotional. Back pain, your whole back is about support. Okay, Your back holds us up, right? keeps you upright. The lower back is connected to 
fear of the future and you know financial support the mid back is guilt the upper back is uh, responsibility okay the burden of responsibility so when we understand what the body is trying to do what's trying to say we can target the you know therapy for and counseling for that client very specifically so we don't have to suffer unnecessarily but also we need to be patient because the body has taken such a long time to get ill it will take some time to get better so that inshallah summarizes the way that we work at afia healing and afia healing alhamdulillah i've been you know i founded it and i've been uh, working you know in this field for the last 16 years alhamdulillah and i started my journey off you know i trained um, well i retrained after being in accountancy and management with hypnotherapy nlp um nlp then what else do i do cbt cbh yeah there's so many things counseling and and then just energetic healing okay and just carried on alhamdulillah learning and understanding healing from an islamic perspective and so with that alhamdulillah you know this is a chance for you inshallah to join a chance for you to come and learn i'm looking for people inshallah that want to become practitioners that that are able to inshallah heal yourself and then go and heal others okay heal yourself and help other people through their journeys because not everyone wants to listen to me um, and if they do then okay khair but alhamdulillah we all have our own audiences inshallah beautiful um what are the causes of eczema irritation right so it happens on the skin why because the skin is the closest contact to your environment and the question is who's getting under your skin where is it on your body for me my example is on my right hand and it's just where i would punch someone okay irritation anger and that's where i would want to sock them okay so may allah protect them and may allah keep me at bay also and these are emotions you see as human beings we we all have our own issues okay we deal with them in our own way and again what you'll also notice is that your body presents symptoms usually on one side of the body it won't just be equal no <clears throat> it'll be on one side and that also has significance is the deep trauma master class a course or one off class a sort of therapy class more theoretical and no this is an actual course so you bring your most biggest you know worrying issue that that's been haunting you your whole life and then i take you through it in a group setting i set out the conditions i set out the 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 therapy route okay of what you need to do step by step and you go through the you go through the exercises and we keep having a back and forth there are four live sessions for q and a and there's a 24/7 whatsapp group and a month after that you continued support as well so you learn about trauma you learn about finding your root cause you learn about how to process and release past trauma how to forgive and forgive yourself and then inshallah to reprogram your subconscious mind because you've lived on a lie for your whole life i am unloved i'm not good enough i'm unworthy um i don't feel validated rubbish you believed a lie and because of believing and living that lie your body has been suffering in the way that it has so what do we do instead let's choose a truth to embody within our being i am loved i am enough allah is enough for me um i am safe in the protection of allah and once we get into that phase your body then begins to operate on that new system every now and again my phone says to me oh update your software okay new version of ios okay fine up up you know the, the install and upgrade fine that's what we do so similarly <clears throat> we with the deep trauma release masterclass want to find your negative self limiting beliefs and move them into positive self belief inshallah so that you live your true purpose you live your true life you live a life not based on other people's approval you live your life according to allah's approval you live your life according to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so many people sadly simply don't pray because of what other people will say they don't fast because of what other people will say they'll go into the pub because what will the work colleague say live according to yourself not according to what people do they are not paying for your life they are not sustaining you they are not nurturing you yet you run after their approval why subhanallah 
Fibromyalgia <clears throat> is autoimmune, which means your body is fighting yourself. And so what is the issue? The issue here is I've had enough. The body is giving up. I, I, I can't do this anymore. Okay, you've, 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 um, it's also known as chronic fatigue syndrome, right? Your adrenals are just whacked out. And so your body says, you know what? I'm not getting up. Forget you. I'm just going to sit here in pain so you can't get up. And that pain also becomes an emotional tool by which other people then might feel sorry for you. So we have to be careful of these things. People don't become a victim to your own stories and the narrations that your nafs has created for you. Okay, scalp psoriasis, similar. Yeah, it'll be similar, but again, a lot of um, uh, irritation that, that's constantly on your head, right? Like it's, it's always going around in your head. It can also be connected to that. Guys, if you're not following, then please do, inshallah. And uh, yeah, leave us a like, a share, and comment, and all this stuff, inshallah. What meaning the symptoms on each side of the left and right? Yeah, um, that inshallah is when you have completed the Afya Healing um, Practitioner Program and then we move into Afya Healing Level 2 where you become a Master Practitioner. That is information for that time. But generally, your right side is connected to your masculinity, left side to your femininity, and masculinity will be your father, your spouse, your siblings, your friends, your colleagues. On the left side will be your mother, your children, and your home environment. Okay? So generally, you tend to see this sort of an, an exchange. And then it also changes if you're left-handed and right-handed. So that's why I don't share too much about this just yet, um, because it can get overwhelming and confusing. Eczema on a child's leg mean behind upper thigh, behind the upper thigh. It's usually a disconnection from the mother, okay, a separation from the mother. It can feel sometimes it's connected to uh, the the sense of abandonment, and yeah, it's it, it, a lot of times people say that is triggered by you know that 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 needly thing, right? Um, but the reality there is also that the child at that point in time feels unprotected and unsafe. That you know I've been, uh, you know, I've, my my personal space has been invaded. Why didn't you save me? Right? That that can also happen. <clears throat> One week ago, I listened to some Quranic verses online, which named Rukia, uh, was named a Rukia for something. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm not too sure about that because we don't really deal with Rukia. So, inshallah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So, guys, inshallah, any questions? Uh, mashallah, yeah, we've had a good uh, exchange. And I hope for those that are new over here, uh, you know, that you had some insight into how we actually deal with issues. And... Um, we deal with it holistically. We deal with it at your pace and know that inshallah with our programs, alhamdulillah, it's there to connect you and empower and educate you from a holistic Islamic perspective. Okay, so we accept the fact that, yeah, there is, there is you know, um, allopathic medicine out there, but there's complementary and there's tib and there's different cultural, you know, approaches. There's Ayurvedic and there's this, that and the other. No problem. But we take what is halal, we take what works, we take what makes sense, and we take what our body needs, inshallah. So, jazakallah khair, inshallah, for your time. And I hope and pray <clears throat> that, inshallah, you'll join us for more of these sessions. And if you'd like me to cover any other topic, inshallah, go to my stories. I've left a uh, left uh, you know a note there that you can fill out. If anyone wants to have a free 15-minute consult about your issue, then let me know, inshallah. I'll ha I'm happy to accommodate you over the next two days. I have some time. Um, but yeah, inshallah, uh, if you're interested in the deep trauma release, then please get in touch and we will send you a discount code as well for being on today, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu Allah ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.